Welcome to Wake Up With God. We live stream daily Mass today. We'll attend the Holy Mass on Monday, 25th, March, 2024. Monday of Holy Week. The Lord is my light and my help. Please keep quiet and concentrate on attending the Mass.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love on this solemnity of the anniversary of the dedication of St. John Bosco Parish Church, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. O God, who from the living and chosen stones prepare an eternal dwelling for your majesty, increase in your church the spirit of grace you have bestowed, so that by new growth your faithful people may build up the heavenly Jerusalem. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The angel brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water flowing out from beneath the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the facade of the temple 
was toward the east. The water flowed down from the southern side of the temple, south of the altar. He led me outside by the north gate and around to the outer gate facing the east, where I saw water trickling from the southern side. He said to me, This water flows into the eastern district down upon the Araba and empties into the sea, the salt waters, which it makes fresh. Wherever the river flows, every sort of living creature that can multiply shall live, and there shall be abundant fish. For wherever this water comes, the sea shall be made fresh. Along both banks of the river, fruit trees of every kind shall grow. Their leaves shall not fade, nor their fruit fail. Every month they shall bear fresh fruit, for they shall be watered by the flow from the sanctuary. Their fruit shall serve for food, and their leaves for medicine. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, you are God's building according to the grace of God given to me. Like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation and another is building upon it. But each one must be careful how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one that is there, namely, Jesus. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroy God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. have chosen and consecrated this house, saith the Lord, that my name may be there forever.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, Take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of Scripture, Zeal for your house will consume me. At this the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and, how, and you will raise it up on three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe in the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today's gospel is the same as the one that you heard yesterday during the Mass of the, third, of the second Sunday, the third Sunday, yeah. Today's gospel gives the dramatic account of Jesus cleansing the temple of its merchants and money changers, and then he followed with the prediction of his death and resurrection. This gospel passage shows us another facet of the real Jesus Christ. Sometimes you may have an image of Jesus Christ that might not be the correct one. The same Jesus of the lost sheep, the same Jesus that avoids the stoning of the adulterous woman, the same Jesus that weeps before the tomb of his friend Lazarus, the same Jesus who calls a public sinner like Matthew to be an apostle, is the same one that today shows a very different countenance and reactions. To understand why all this happens exteriorly, we have to go to Jesus' interior. It's, it's there that his indignation arises because of what he sees. The temple was the place where God willed to associate himself so that his own people would feel him close among them. But what did did his own people do? They turned the temple into something else. The animal merchants turned it into a noisy marketplace. 
and the money changers turn it into a hideout of thieves. The people used what did not belong to them as if it was their own. And so they evicted God from his own house. In addition, the merchants sold the animals and birds which were meant for the sacrifice at unjust and exorbitant prices. It is said that they were charging 18 to 20 times the regular price outside the temple. So you notice that the 5-6 was already uh, practiced at the time of Jesus. And the animal inspectors, which were supposed to select the animals to be offered for sacrifice, allowed themselves to be bribed by the merchants by disqualifying even the healthy animals brought by poor shepherds and farmers for sacrifice. And so Jesus considered this a glaring social injustice aggravated by the fact that it was perpetrated in the name of religion. Jesus' reaction, therefore, was expressed in holy indignation. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves, is indignation a sin? Recently, on the 31st of January 2024, Pope Francis, in the weekly catechesis, said, and I quote, the holy indignation Jesus feels has an origin, the zeal for the things of God. This implies, on the one hand, that one is, is able to recognize that there is something that is God's, and on the other hand, that our will and sensibility cannot remain indifferent when we see, in fact, that an injustice has been committed of taking what is one's own. Hence, holy indignation, according to Pope Francis, not only is a virtue, but also a testimony of evangelization. The things of God are not negotiable. They are to be respected. And by having them respected, one sees that God is, an, is not an idea or a thought, unquote. The contrary of indignation is indifference, meaning to say we just don't care. Indifference in reality is another manifestation of agnosticism. And so, because of his right to zeal or holy indignation, Jesus must have angered a lot of people, especially the scribes and the Pharisees, but he also inspired people with respect for his action. In fact, today's gospel notes that Jesus' disciples recalled the words of Scripture, zeal for your house consumes me like fire. And the, and, and the disciple of Jesus gave a justification for Jesus' rage. As we celebrate the dedication anniversary of St. John Bosco Parish, today's gospel convince, conveys us, to us some messages. First, we need to avoid a calculating mentality in, when we worship. This means that our relationship with God must be that of a child to his parents one of mutual love and respect for the family's good with no thought of personal loss or gain. Fulfilling, for example, our Sunday obligation only out of fear of mortal sin and consequent 
eternal punishment is a non-Christian approach. In the same way, obeying the commandments and doing acts of charity merely as prerequisite for heavenly reward are acts driven by a profit motive of which Jesus would not approve. Hence, let us ask ourselves, do we think of God as a vending machine into which we put our sacrifices and good deeds so that we get back his blessing? The second reflection, we need to remember that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We heard this in the second reading of this Mass, where St. Paul reminds us that we are God's temple because the Spirit of God dwells in us. Hence, we should not desecrate God's temple by impurity and injustice. We are expected to cleanse our hearts of pride, hatred, jealousy, and all evil thoughts, desires, and plans. As Jesus cleansed the temple, let us welcome Jesus into our heart, hearts by repenting and the renewal and renew our lives. We will drive out the wild animals that do not belong to the holy temple of our body by making a whip of cords out of our fasting, penance, and almsgiving during Lent, and by going to confession to receive God's loving forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation. And thirdly, we need to love the parish church, our parish church. You know, 50 years ago, I was a, a newly ordained priest, and I was assigned a spiritual director in the school. But I used to celebrate the mass of the school in the what we used to call the old chapel that was uh, just close to the Pasay Road, and where so many people were coming every day for Mass, and especially on Sunday. And then, in 1976, uh, it, it became a parish, and then uh, the church was built. Of course, behind all this, there was the first parish priest, Father, Father Godfrey Rosen, for, for whom we have to, uh, to remember. So anyway, we need to love our parish church, this temple. Our parish church is the place where we come together as a community to love and praise God. It is the place where we gather strength to support one another in the task of living the gospel. It is the place where we come to shed tears when we are in pain and in grief or to enter privately into intimate conversation with God. It is the place where prodigal sons and daughters meet the merciful love in the sacrament of reconciliation and are welcomed back to the community. Let us look around our church and treasure it. Let us make our church even more of a holy place by adding our prayers and songs to parish worship and offering our time and talents in the various ministries. So, dear brothers and sisters, as we contemplate Jesus' burning love for the things of his Father and the saving mystery of his cross, let us ask God to cleanse the temple of his church and purify the sanctuary of our hearts. May we be filled with the burning love for his house and may obedience to his commandment absorb and surround us along this journey of our life. Only in this way 
we make of our church, of our building, a real family, a real community of believers. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As living stones that form the temple of the Holy Spirit, let us bring our prayers to God who dwells in the midst of his people. Together we pray, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may call all people into his church to follow together in his footsteps along the way of salvation and life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may guide all the members of the church to transform their institutions and societies with the values of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may pour out his grace, help, and holiness through the sacraments and prayers offered in this church on those who come here to worship and on those who still cannot visit this holy house, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may heal and touch the lives of those struggling with sickness, loneliness, and unemployment through the ministry of his body, the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ may admit the faithful departed into the company of the saints to join in the praises of the church in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, grant us a tireless faith and a boundless love that following St. John Bosco in our daily situation, we may be signs and bearers of your love for the young. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, the offering made here and grant that by it those who seek your favor may receive it in this place, the power of the sacraments, and the answer to their prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in your benevolence you are pleased to dwell in this house of prayer in order to perfect us as the temple of the Holy Spirit, supported by the perpetual help of your grace and resplendent with the glory of a life acceptable to you. Year by year, you, you sanctify the church, the bride of Christ, foreshadowed in visible buildings, so that rejoicing as the mother of countless children, she may be given her place in your heavenly glory. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O oh lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and help of Christians, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John Bosco and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, among them Father Godfrey Rusen, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not ready that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. O God, who chose to foreshadow for us the heavenly Jerusalem through the sign of your church on earth, grant, we pray, that by our partaking of this sacrament, we may be made the temple of your grace and may enter the dwelling place of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please kneel for the intercessory prayer to St. John Bosco. O St. John Bosco, whom God raised to be the friend of our souls, set us free from the wiles of the enemy, that we may offer our hearts to the Lord, whole and undefiled. Trusting in your immense love of God, we turn to your powerful intercession, that we may obtain the graces we beg for. We pray for our families and loved ones. Protect them from all dangers and any form of sickness of mind and body. Keep them safe from spiritual decay and moral confusion, conflicts and misunderstandings, separation and depression, sadness, apathy and despair. May they always remain hopeful in their faith, united in love and joyful in sacrifice for one another. We leap up to your loving care, our children and young ones. Teach them to live as enthusiastic Christians and dependable servants in society. Lead them to follow the ways of the gospel and treasure their intimacy with Jesus in the blessed sacrament. Dear St. John Bosco, may we burn with your ardent love for souls as we generously work for the salvation of our neighbors. Bring us closer to the Blessed Virgin Mother, that under her protective mantle, we may grow daily in holiness and ultimately share the joys of heaven. With you and with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. St. John Bosco. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today for the dedication of this church, make you abound, abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. And may he who has willed that all his scattered children should be gathered together in his son, Grant that you may become his temple and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so, when you are thoroughly cleansed, may God dwell within you and grant you to possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sadom Bosco Masayam. Sama Sama.
Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem video. Nếu thấy hay, hãy nhấn like, đăng ký kênh và comment để ủng hộ chúng mình nhé.